Hello, good morning and Happy New Year, if it's not too late to say that. I'm very happy to be connected today from the European Union Intellectual Property Office here in Alicante to talk about the ideas powered for business services we have in place for SMEs in the European Union. Let me say first that these initiatives involve close collaboration with the national and regional IP offices around the European Union and we extend from here our thanks to them for all their support in getting the message out to the SMEs, the small and medium enterprises in every corner of Europe. My name is Lynn Bircha and I work at the customer department at the U European Union Intellectual Property Office, the EU IPO. And let me introduce my colleague here, Jose Ignacio Maldonado, who will be presenting a little bit later on. Uh, Jose Ignacio is a project manager of the SME program. Uh, good morning, Jose Ignacio. Good morning, Lynn. Uh, good morning, everybody. It's a pleasure to be with you to do today with all of you. Good. Okay, so um, just very quickly before we start, please take note of this warning, which will be very important if you go on to register trademarks and designs with us. The EU IPO does not send invoices. So if you get one, it is not from us. So don't pay it. Um, please double check any request for payment before you pay. Okay, um, you can send any invoices you might receive to information at euipo.europa.eu. You have the email there on the screen. And uh, you also can have more information um, in the link, okay, fees and payments. You can download this presentation um, after, you know, after, the, after the presentation today for all the links. Okay. So, ideas powered for business support services for SMEs. What's new in 2021? We will deal with two topics today. I will present the SME Fund, which is a 20 million euro grant scheme to give you financial support on your intellectual property needs and costs. And Jose Ignacio will then tell you about another service also under the Ideas Powered for Business SME program, offering free personalized consultations to SMEs, small and medium enterprises, in the European Union. These consultations are given by IP experts, intellectual property experts, from all over the European Union, and we at EUIPO simply bring the SME and the IP expert together. So Jose will tell you a bit more about that. Uh, we won't take any more than 20 minutes each and we will leave at least 20 minutes at the end for questions. So please send your questions in as they occur to you. You have an option at the bottom of your screen where you just need to type in your question and also indicate the country you are, you are writing from. And um, we will do our best to cover as many questions as possible. But if we don't get around to answering all the questions during the webinar, you can send your question to uh, information at euipo.europa.eu. Uh, I'll show you that email on the screen a little bit later on so you can take note. And we will send you the answers by email. Um, all questions, I will point out, um, that are of general interest and might be interesting for, for others, will be published with the answer in all of the languages, um, the, so the 23 languages of the European Union, in the frequently asked um, questions section of the EU IPO website. And um, I, will point them, I will point that out to you a little bit later on. Okay. So, um, let's get started. The SME Fund, this financial support for intellectual property for small and medium-sized enterprises. What is it? Well, the SME Fund aims at helping EU uh, SMEs to manage their IP assets. No? So, it's aimed at businesses that wish to develop their IP strategies and protect their IP rights, trademarks and designs at national, regional or EU level. 
It is an action of the European Commission implemented by the EU IPO. Uh, and as I mentioned, in close collaboration with the national and regional IP offices. All small and medium enterprises based in the European Union are eligible to apply. And the grants will be awarded on a strict first come, first served basis. So, what does the, what does the grant consist of? Um, the SME Fund offers two services. Service one is 75% off IP pre-diagnostic services offered by participating national IP offices. And service two offers 50% off the basic application fees of trademarks and designs um, at national, regional and European Union level. So what is this IP pre-diagnostic service? I can hear you say. <laughs> Um, okay, so this is uh, it's, it's an IP audit carried out by professional IP auditors and it would be based on the needs of your business. So you will, for example, identify what intellectual property you own and what IP you should protect. And this will help you to develop an IP strategy for your firm now and in the future. Okay, so the SME uh, Fund IP Pre-Diagnostic Service, or IP Scan, as we also call it, is available in eight countries for the moment. Those countries are Austria, Bulgaria, Croatia, the Czech Republic, Germany, Latvia, Slovakia, and Spain. Um, however, more countries will soon come on board. Uh, the list, this list is published on the website and you need to check that this service is provided under the SME fund in the country you are established in. Only then can you apply for service one. Okay. Uh, service two, on the other hand, is available from all intellectual property offices in Europe. So national, regional and EU level here at the UE. <clears throat> okay, so... Um, the SME should make uh, an application for service one or service two or a combination of both and um, there is a maximum reimbursement per SME of 1,500 euros. So that's the maximum you can be reimbursed. Okay, so when can you apply for a grant? Um, <clears throat> applications are open right now. We opened for applications just last week. So you can apply right away. And there are five windows during which you can apply. January, March, May, July and September. In the in-between months, the applications received the previous month will be processed. The SME can only apply for the grant during an open window using the online form provided. Applications made outside each of the five, the, this, these five time periods will not be considered. The SME can apply for one service in one window and the other service in a subsequent window. Okay, this is possible. Only one grant application per service, however, is allowed in total. Okay, one grant application per service. So during 2021, you can do one grant application for service one and one grant application for service two, or just one grant application for a combination of both if you prefer. And the last reimbursement request should be uh, submitted before the end of 2021. Okay, so the SME fund is available only during 2021. Okay, this is the checklist. What does the SME need to know and have ready before applying? Um, you have this checklist in the, in the website, so I will point it out to you a little bit later on where you as you can see, the, the checklist has some links and these are important and they will help you with your application. Okay, so let's go through it then. Number one, 
uh, you have to be an established EU small or medium-sized company. And you have a link there so that you can see the EU definition of what a small and medium-sized company is. So you can check that if you're in any doubt. You need to read the call for proposals before um, starting to fill in the application form. Um, in this call for proposals link, you have the rules for submission and you also have step-by-step -step guidance on how to apply, as well as the official SME fund call for proposal document. So yes, please check this link too, okay? And then you need to have your, company, your company's bank details and a bank statement where these details appear. So company name as account holder, your IBAN number and BIC and SWIFT code. You have links there so you can check exactly what that should look like if you're in any doubt. You also need to have your company's VAT certificate. Okay, so please check this link under VAT certificate and follow the example of your country to fill in the VAT field on the online application form. And this includes the country code. So please check carefully that link. Now, you also need to know what services you plan to apply for. Service one, service two, or both, as we just explained. So you need to have that clear. Uh, you need to know if you're going to apply for service two, so trademarks and designs. You need to know what trademarks and designs you want to apply for. So if you're a Spanish company, you might want to apply for a national trademark, a national design, and maybe an EU trademark as well. So you need to know that um, before you apply. And you also need to understand that you can't request the services, you can't request the grants if you have already received national or EU funding for the same service, okay? So this is the checklist, very important to go through before you apply and make sure you have all those documents ready. Okay, let's take a look now at the procedure. And this is very important because the order has to be this one. So number one, the SME applies for the grants and in, at this moment you indicate the services, one, two or both that you want to apply the grant to. And then, um, oh yes, I will mention here as well, when you submit your form, you should receive a confirmation email and reference number. Keep this email and reference number safe because you will need it for all future uh, communications between us, okay? So when you, um, supply, when you submit your application, you'll get a quick, con you'll get a confirmation email. It can take 60 minutes to reach you maximum. So if you don't get it immediately, don't worry. Um, so then, then you will get your grant decision. And this is the second email. And you will get this in the, during the following month. So if you apply for the grant in January, you should get your grant decision sometime in February. Um, if it's positive, if you get a positive grant decision, then you can apply for the services. So the IP rights um, and or IP scan, as we mentioned, okay? And you have 30 days to do that, 30 days to apply for the services that you indicated in point one in your grant application. And after then, after you apply for the services and pay for them, uh, then you can apply for reimbursement. And you can do that, you can do that, you apply for reimbursement in the link that you get in the grant decision in point two. So when you get your grant decision, there's a link. You need to keep that safe, that email safe, because you will need to use that link when it comes to applying for reimbursement after you apply and pay for the services in question. Okay, so this is the order. It's extremely important, so worth repeating. Number one, the SME applies for the grant. Number two, you get your grant decision. Three, only then should you apply for the services, so the trademarks, designs, or uh, IP prediagnostic services. And um, 
then you apply for reimbursement at the end, okay? Using the link that you get in your grant decision. Okay, um, so where to find information and to get support? Um, you should see on your screen the different um, ways you can get information. First of all, you have the SME Fund webpage, and we will go to that uh, straight away, and I'll show it to you. And the call for proposals, okay? That's the link you have in the checklist. Um, you can also send an email to information at euipo.europa.eu. Now, this is also the email that if we don't get to your question today, uh, that you can send, please send it to us um, by email and we will, we will answer you directly by email. Okay, that's the email. Uh, you can also call us at the Information Centre and you have the number there on the screen. And you do also have a live chat on the EU IPO website. So you can interact there with our live agents and they will help you. Uh, and lastly, you have the frequently asked questions. And this is updated regularly. As the questions come in, uh, we update the frequently asked questions. So all information is available to everybody. And uh, of course, in the 23 languages of the European Union, uh, this information, all of this information is available. Okay, so let's take a look at the SME Fund page where you can apply for a grant um, uh, from the SME Fund. Okay, so hopefully I can, there we go. Uh, we, here you can see the uh, EU IPO website. Uh, if you just Google SME Fund, you will also get straight to the SME Fund page. And this is the banner you should be looking out for. This is our SME section. So here, all of this information can be quite interesting for you. So SME Fund first, let's go there. Okay, I think I do want to continue. Great, so here we are on the EU IPO page. Let's go into the SME Fund. Hopefully it works. Okay, we seem to be, oh, there we go. Great, so um, this is the, the SME Fund page on the EU IPO uh, website where you have all the information you need, okay? Um, let me just point out some particularly interesting parts or important parts. For example, for the IP pre-diagnostic service, um, if you want to apply for that service, you need to check this, uh, this link, okay? This is the link where you can find the countries that offer the service. And as I mentioned, uh, we have countries, new countries coming on um, and they will, more countries will be available in subsequent windows. Okay, so important to check that list. Only if your country offers uh, the service can you apply for it. Here we have the windows, here you have the checklist with all of those important links that you need to check to make sure that you send in your application correctly. Incidentally, if we do get an application and some information is missing, we will send you a, a request to complete the information. Okay, but that might slow things down a little bit. So if you check the, if you double check the checklists, um, you might avoid that. Here you have the link for applications. So you can, you can click here and put all that information we mentioned. It's very short, it takes maybe 10 minutes to do the whole application once you have everything ready. And one more thing I would point out at the very end here is where you have the frequently asked questions. So if you do have questions, check here first. And if you don't have the answer there, of course, you can send us, um, you can send us uh, an email to, to ask a particular question. 
just quickly, let's go in there. This is the EU IPO frequently asked questions. And the SME fund questions are here under websites. Okay, so when you go in there, you have all these questions that you can click and get your answer. Please let us know if it's helpful so that we can try to improve. And of course, um, you can put, you can change this to all the languages of the European Union. And now we have it in Spanish, for example, um, so that whatever language it is you speak, you have access to the information. Okay, so um, that's it for the SME fund. And now please let me pass the floor to my colleague, Jose Ignacio, who will tell us all about another service, as we said, under the Ideas Powered for Business um, uh, brand, uh, which is free uh, personalized consultations for SMEs. Thank you so much, Lynn. Uh, free personalized consultations on intellectual property for SMEs. The UIPO also facilitates uh, free personalized consultations on intellectual property for small and medium-sized companies. These consultations are offered by intellectual property lawyers and IP law firms from all over Europe who have signed up to offer this support to SMEs during these very difficult times. From here, we extend our thanks to those intellectual property experts from around Europe, because without them, this service will not be possible. The UIPO matches SMEs with the providers of the services. We are simply intermediaries. The real hard work is done by these IP lawyers and IP law firms who give this service free of charge in the language of every SME. How uh, you can make a consultation and find support? Well, uh, this is a free of charge consultation that can cover any question on intellectual property. I'm gonna give you some examples. In case do you have doubts on how to protect uh, your business idea. Uh, in case do you need help when applying for a trademark or any other IP right. If you have received an opposition to the registration of your trademark and maybe you need some advice and support. Or maybe if you have ever thought about the possibility to make money, license your trademark. All these questions can be answered and you can be uh, supported by these uh, IP intellectual property experts. So basically, uh, this support service covers two areas. The first one, the pro bono service, is a free intellectual property consultation open to all SMEs in the European Union on any intellectual property question, such as those I have just mentioned. In the other hand, we have a second service named Effective Dispute Resolution. And this service is for those SMEs that are involved in proceedings, such as oppositions, with the UIPO. Our experts will make them aware of the mediation alternatives available to help to find a solution that is acceptable for both parties and to avoid having to go to court. To access these free personalized consultations, you can go through UIPO uh, website. In this case, you see here a banner, UIPO supporting business, where you can access uh, the form to request this uh, free consultation. The steps are really clear. First, you will fill up the application and you will be matched with experts that fit with your needs, as indicated in the application form. Then, after this request, 
you will receive a list of suitable experts and you choose who to contact. Then, after the consultation, we ask you to please give your feedback so we can continuously improve the service. I will, I will show you now how to access from the website. If you can see, we are in the homepage of the UIPO website. You see here, IP for business. If you click, you will uh, land in the area where you will find information, especially that is tailored to support small and medium companies. If you see here, there is a button that says free personalized consultation. During click there, you will land in this form that has four steps. Please follow the instructions because it's really easy to uh, complete. Also, in case you need, you have here an online chat where our chat hosts uh, will be glad to help you and support you while filling the form. So again, uh, this is the area uh, uh, especially uh, done for SMEs and here the free personalized button to access uh, the form to request this free personalized consultation. And please let me show you a summary of the steps to request it. As we have seen, you enter in the uh, UIPO website and request the pro bono service. After that, you will receive an email with a suitable list of providers with their contact details. Then you need to select one and contact them. You have 10 days from receiving our email to please kindly inform us what, who is the pro bono provider you have chosen. And now you can contact them. When this consultation is finished, please inform us uh, by email. I'll kindly reply our satisfaction survey. Now, I would like to share with you some feedback we have received from small and medium-sized companies all over Europe that have already tried this service. In this case, Esteban Camacho from the company Research and Development Concrete says, very interesting service to help SMEs solve their doubts on intellectual property at zero cost. Then, from Croatia, the company Mr. Popper says, Great initiative for startups and new companies. We are very satisfied with the IP pro bono experience. Now, Salty Pelican from Portugal. With the help of the mediation services, we have concluded our trademark opposition with a satisfactory ending for both parties. So please, we invite you to request the service in case you need uh, an IP consultation or IP support to solve any doubt, any intellectual property doubt. And now, uh, really important, where you can get more information and get some support to request the services. First of all, I have, as I have shown you, on the Ideas Power for Business Hub. Let me show it to you again. This is the area of the UIPO website where you can find information and get the support. So I'm gonna show you what is the correct access 
to it. You see here IP for businesses to enter. Here you have several buttons. You see here free personalized consultation. And you directly land into the form where you can request this support. Of course, and again, as my colleague Lynn uh, has previously mentioned, we have the email information at uipo.europa.eu where you can send us any question. Also, you can call us on the phone you can see on the screen. And of course, we invite you to use our live chat, which is available from this specific uh, form where you can request uh, these consultation services free of charge. Please, uh, we invite you to uh, request them. Okay. And now, Oops. yes, Lynn. Sorry, sorry to interrupt there, Jose. So thank you. Thank you so much. I see we're getting quite a lot of questions in. Uh, all of them, at least the ones I'm seeing, are on the SME fund. So that means your presentation was very clear. Um, so, um, okay, I'm going to, if it's okay. okay with you, Jose, read out the first question and maybe you can see what you yes, can do to please. answer it. Yeah. Okay, so question number one. Good morning, everybody. After submitting the application form, how and when will I know if I got the grant? Jose, can you attempt that one? Yes, yes. Uh, thanks for your question. Well, first of all, uh, after submitting the online form, uh, SMEs uh, will receive an email, which is the acknowledge of the receipt. Uh, please take into account, this just means we have received your application. This email contains a PDF with all the information you have already submitted, and maybe it can take uh, up to 60 minutes uh, to reach your inbox. So please don't get impatient when you uh, submit the application. It will take a few minutes uh, for you to receive it. Uh, this email, as I said, just confirms uh, we got the application, and it does not mean it does not mean you got the grant. Uh, when the window uh, for applications is closed, we will start analyzing all the requests we have received. Uh, in the case further information or some clarifications are needed, we will contact uh, the applicant uh, to request this further information. Uh, we continue with the analysis of all the information received and all the current and eligible applicants will receive a second email. In this case, the second email could have a, a, a positive or negative grant decision. And this is the grant decision email. This is the email uh, you need to wait for before approaching your national intellectual property office to request one of the two services or to approach the UIPO to request service two. In the case, uh, the application results in a negative one decision, uh, the applicant, uh, the, the medium and medium-sized company will receive an email indicating the reasons why. If this happens, it could happen, uh, you can apply in again in a subsequent window when uh, this is open. Uh, this will be uh, uh, the, the answer and is in line with uh, what uh, Julian explained before uh, within the different steps of the uh, application for the SME fund grant. Thank I think you. We have uh, more questions. Yes, here we have the second one. Um, I would like to know when I can apply for service to trademarks and designs in the intellectual property office of my country. Okay, so um, 
I'm going to go to the procedure again, just so that it's crystal clear. So um, this, this viewer uh, wants to apply for service two, so trademarks and designs in an intellectual property, uh, property office. Okay, so a national intellectual property office, I understand. Um, yes, please don't rush out and apply for trademarks and designs if you want to get reimbursed before you do your application. As we said, the order is this one. Okay, so first you apply for the grants, first you apply for the grants, and here, in the case of this viewer, you would indicate the trademarks and designs of your National Intellectual Property Office. So you would in indicate them in the grant application. And then you need to wait for your grant decision, as we have pointed out, okay, that you will get the following month when after the window has closed. So for example, if you apply in January for the grant, you'll get this in February at some point, no? Your grant decision. Uh, so your question is, when can you apply for the trademarks and designs? So it is after this point, so after you get your grant decision. Only after you get your positive grant decision uh, should you apply for the trademarks and designs or the IP, or, or the IP scan, as the case may be. Um, so, in short, please wait for the grant decision before applying for your trademarks and designs. Okay, and then of course, after you pay for the trademarks, um, you can apply for the reimbursement, as we spoke, as we mentioned before. Okay, I hope that was clear. Jose, next question. Yes, I can go for the next question. Says, first of all, thanks for the explanations and for the webinar. It is really useful. I have one question. I'm the owner of a small company, and I usually deal with trademarks and other intellectual property matters through a law firm. Can this law firm I usually work with request this grant for me? Okay, thank you very much for your question. That is a really good question. Uh, what an IP lawyer or, or attorney or IP law firm cannot, cannot do is to request the grant in your name. All SMEs must request the grant for themselves. This is really important. The grant, the SME fund grant must be requested by the company. But, and this is really important to highlight, if you wish to count uh, on an IP lawyer, an IP attorney, or an IP law firm to apply for your trademarks and designs, you can do it. Uh, so, uh, in this case, is uh, business as usual when it comes to applying for the trademarks and designs. If you work with an IP lawyer, they can they can do this for you as they usually would. Uh, however, you need to make the application for the grant uh, by yourself. So, whoever applies for the trademark and the science, uh, you or your IP lawyer or IP law firm, it is very important that the name of the company you indicate in the grant form coincides exactly with the name of the right holder in the trademark or design application. In other words, the uh, IP rights owner. All in all, SME grant, SME fund grant request done by the company. Later on, uh, with the National Intellectual Property Office or with the UIPO, if you work with an IP lawyer, an IP attorney, an IP law firm, they can do the application for those trademarks and designs for you. There is no problem you work with a lawyer or an IP law firm to do these applications of IP rights. Uh, I think it's answered. I don't know if you have more questions, Lynn. 
Yes, um, actually, yes, that is a very important point. And maybe we can just uh, look at it on the procedure. So to repeat, the SME, him, him or herself, uh, has to apply for the grant and the SME has to apply for reimbursement uh, at the end of the procedure. But on point three, um, where we have here SME applies for the services, um, this application for the trademarks and designs at national, regional or EU level can be done by the professional representative, no problem, business as usual. And um, as Jose pointed out, and that is quite important, um, when you put your name, like the SME, the name of the company here in the application form, point one for the grant, the, the grant application form, that company name has to coincide exactly uh, with what you put in your trademark or design application. It has to be the same name, same wording. Okay? Very important. Okay, so the next question. Can you please clarify if there is any time limit uh, to apply for a trademark or design after an applicant receives the positive outcome of the SME fund grant request? So is there a time limit? Um, and yes, indeed, there is a time limit. So let's just point that out again. Um, so after you get your grant decision, no? So you've applied for your grant, you got your grant decision and it's positive. So you have 30 days to apply for the services, whether they be trademarks, designs or IP pre-diagnostic services, 30 days. So please take note of that. Once you get your grant decision, uh, you need to think about uh, already applying for those, um, for those services, okay? Within 30 days. I hope that's clear. Jose, any more questions? Yes. Um, let me see. I have a question regarding service one, IPP diagnostic service, or IP scan. First of all, could you please clarify what is exactly and also if my National Intellectual Property Office does not offer this service, can I not apply for it? Uh, thanks in advance. Okay, thanks a lot. Uh, okay, I'm going to show you again uh, where to see um, the where to see the uh, National Intellectual Property Office that are currently participating offering service one within the SME fund. Uh, Please, here you see a link where you can find the list of participating offices. Uh, and as Lynn pointed out uh, before, please keep an eye because this list will increase with more uh, offices participating. Uh, and I think as well, you were asking um, uh, what is IPP Diagnostic Service or what is IP Scan about? Okay, let me repeat that. Uh, basically means uh, an audit of your business intangible assets subject uh, to be registered and protected. Or in other words, uh, the analysis of your company intellectual property assets, the ones you already protect, for example, trademarks, designs, patents, or those you potentially need to protect. This audit is done to help companies to, mas to maximize the usage, but also the benefits of the intellectual property assets. Okay. I think, Lynn, you, do you have more questions? Yes, um, I have one here, it's quite long. So it says, good morning, I have a question. Good morning. Uh, could I request a grant for two trademarks now in the current window and make another request for another trademark in any of the upcoming windows? I have quite clear now the two trademarks I need for my small business, 
but most probably around May I would need a new trademark and I would like to know if I could request again the grant. Let's say Ocea. That means you're asking if you can request the grant twice for service too, so for trademarks. Um, that's also quite an important question. We did mention it, but it's good that we emphasize this point. Uh, the quick answer is no. You cannot request um, service to twice. Okay, so it is only possible to make one. I mean, we can go back again. I'm not sure if you can see the procedure on the screen um, to the procedure. You can only, in the, in the application for grants, um, you can decide whether you apply for service one or service two or a combination of both, okay? Now, what you can do is you can apply for service one in one window and service two in a subsequent window. This is fine. So you don't have to do service one and service two together in the same application if you don't want to. Okay, it's possible to make two grant applications for each for different services. So one for service one, one for service two. But you cannot um, apply twice for service two or for service one. You can only make one per service. So that means if you are in the situation now that you are ready to, uh, you know, you already know two trademarks, um, uh, but you're not going to have the information on the third until later on in the year. Uh, it would, um, uh, if you want to get reimbursed for the three of those trademarks, uh, you should wait until you have the information on the three trademarks clear, and then you apply for the grant, indication, indicating in the grant application form the three trademarks. And um, then when you get the grant decision, it's then when you should apply for those three trademarks after getting the grant decision. It's very important. You can only get reimbursed uh, on trademarks and design application fees uh, if you have indicated them in the grant application and received a positive grant decision. Okay, so in your case, if you want to get your 50% reimbursement, you should wait until you know everything about that. Well, at least you have clear that third, uh, that third trademark you want to register. Okay. Jose, anything? Yes. Else? Yes, I, uh, we have another question. Hi there. I have tried to complete the form and I'm, I am not sure if I inserted properly the BIT number you are requesting within the application form of the SME grant. How do I know what is the correct BIT number? I am not totally sure, as I think in my country it is a bit different than in other countries of the EU. Okay, thanks for your question. Uh, it's a really good one. The BIT number uh, for all uh, the ones that are not sure, is the company identification number uh, individually assigned to enterprises to identify them as established companies and also as taxpayers. Uh, this BIT number uh, could vary from one country to another country. And in some of them, uh, there are specific uh, rules to obtain it or to get a similar document, no? So, uh, in case this is going to be helpful to support you on identifying this uh, BIT number we are requesting, as well as a BIT certificate, uh, let me show you uh, the SME fund page. Uh, here you see the checklist for applicants. As Lynn went through previously, showing to you uh, what are the requisites. Uh, to start applying for this SME grant. Here you see a link to the BIT certificate. If we click on it, it will show a PDF with, with some supportive information.
Let's see if it loads. Great. So while it's loading, we're talking about VAT, VAT, right? So we're talking about oh, right. this. And, and that link that Jose is showing us right now is on the checklist that we pointed okay. out. Okay. I think it's, it's loaded now. Perfect. So once you enter in this uh, supported document to identify what is the BIT number uh, in your country, you just need to check your country, for example, I don't know, France, and you can see how it is named there. And also clicking here, you will access to an example of how it looks like this BIT number within the specific country you have chosen. So in case you have doubts, you can check uh, this PDF to find further information. Okay, great. Thank you so much, Jose. That was, uh, I think that's an important question as well. You know, check those links in the checklist. Okay, so I have another question here. It says, hello, I am in doubt about one thing. What happens if I include in the grant request the details of service two, in this case, for example, three trademarks, and finally I change my mind on a request in my National Intellectual Property Office just two trademarks? Thank you. Okay, so... So this situation, uh, I think the, thank you for the question first. Okay, so uh, the viewer is asking that if in, in the procedure, I hope we can all see the procedure, in, number, in point number one of the procedure, when I apply for the grant, and I indicate here three trademarks, um, and then when I come to apply, so after I get my positive grant decision, and I apply for the services, I decide only to apply for two. Um, what happens then for reimbursement, okay? So um, the answer is that there's no, this is no problem. So there's no problem if this happens. Um, the only thing you need to do is that when you, of course, if when you come to point three, you apply for the two trademarks that you finally decide you need. And then when you're applying for reimbursement, you indicate those trademarks and you will be, so two trademarks, and you will be reimbursed for those two trademarks and not for three as you had originally intended. Okay, so this is not a problem. And um, yeah, so of course things may change. And uh, if that happens, no problem. You will be reimbursed for the trademarks and designs that you indicate in the grant application and that you actually apply and pay for. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, Lynn. Uh, I think we have more questions. Let me read it. Uh, hi, really nice webinar. Congratulations. Just one thing. If I need support to complete the semi-fund grant request form, uh, where can I get help? Thank you. Okay, just as a reminder, I'm gonna show you uh, the contact channels or the support channels we have for the SME fund grant. First of all, as uh, previously Lynn uh, showed to you, we have the SME fund page and the call for proposals. Uh, we have as well the email information at uipo.europa.eu. Our usual phone number, and this is really important because the last two could be maybe the, the easiest ones for you to use. First of all, the live chat, I'm gonna show it to you now, the live chat that is available in uh, the form to request the SME grant. Let me show it to you. If you see, this is the SME fan grant form to request this, uh, Grant. If you see on the right hand side, there is a Nikon online chat, which you can click to get uh, support while filling this form. 
and probably that is one of the easiest way to get support. And also the last one is the FAQs available for the SME fund grant. I will show you again how to reach them. As you as you find that, Jose, I would say there's lots and lots of questions coming in. So don't know if we'll have time for all of them. Okay, we will do our best. If we go to the footer of the UIP, UIPO website, you enter into help and FAQs. Here on the right hand side, you see new SME fund. And you will find the frequently asked questions of this initiative. Great. I think it's covered. Great. Yes, I think that's very clear. So, as mentioned, in the 23 languages of the European Union. Okay, um, as I said, we have lots of questions and we have four minutes left. So, we will try to quickly answer a few more. And, um, and as we said, we will answer the rest in writing. So, the next one is, um, what happens if my grant request is rejected? Can this decision be turned around? Um, and the answer here is, well, if you apply for the grants and you get a negative grant decision, um, you can apply again in a subsequent window, okay? So this can happen, for example, if in your grant application you don't comply with all the requirements. Um, as I said, if there is information missing, we will get back to you and say, listen, you need to send this, this and this. If you were, if maybe you don't send us that information on time, we will give you a deadline. And uh, then you could, then you would receive a negative grant decision. So um, not to worry, you can apply again in a subsequent window. Uh, and of course, that the next time please um, obviously check your negative grant decision to see where you went wrong, and then you can make sure to send the correct information in the next application, okay? So if you do get a negative grant decision, you can apply again in this case, okay? Um, I think I'm gonna go for, for uh, one last question, maybe? Yes, I have a very short one here maybe you can answer it um can i okay. use the grant for patents Jose, okay. can we use the grant for patents yes uh no i'm afraid no uh service two only covers trademarks and designs at national regional or uh, european level so it does not cover patents service two of the SME fund covers only trademarks and design applications. Uh, uh, and if you allow me, Lynn, yes. uh, I have an announcement. Oh. Uh, I have press news and I would like to share with you all. We have uh, just launched yesterday the easy filing. Uh, this is a simplified, uh, easy to use form to apply for trademarks in the UIPO. If you allow me, uh, I'm going to show you the homepage of the UIPO website where uh, you can see a banner which says Easy Filing Go Live, where you can access this easy to use and fulfill a trademark application form. Uh, this form minimizes the risk of irregularities and also it includes. Uh, an avatar which guides you along the process and also allows uh, to chat with our chat host and ask them any doubts uh, during the online trademark application process. So remember, easy filing, new trademark application form, really easy to use, minimizes risk of irregularities and includes an avatar and direct access to our chat host which will help you to uh, sort out any doubt or question you have while you apply for uh, your European trademark. Thank you, Lynn. Okay, fantastic. And that easy filing went live just yesterday. So we're very excited about that. And we think it's going to be 
yes. really useful for small and medium-sized enterprises that don't have perhaps experience in filing trademarks. So please take advantage of that um, if you apply for service too. Okay, so we've come to an end. Unfortunately, it's already 11 o'clock. As I said, we have a lot more questions here that we just didn't uh, have time for, but please send them in to information at euipo.europa.eu. So this is the email on the screen and we will um, answer you by email. And as I said, if the questions are of general interest, we will also add them to the frequently asked questions translated uh, into the 23 languages of the European Union. So, um, in conclusion, we would like to encourage you to apply for both the SME Fund and the free personalized consultation on intellectual property, which is available to you. So, um, yes, we would hope you, you will go ahead and do that. These two services in the Ideas Powered for Business program are especially intended to help SMEs during the, this COVID crisis. And uh, yeah, we really hope you find them interesting. Um, I would mention also your feedback would be highly appreciated so we can improve our services for small and medium sized enterprises. And also quickly to mention, keep tuned because we launch our SME website under the Ideas Powered for Business brand during 2021. And we can promise you there a whole range of services and tools for startups and SMEs. Um, so we think that will be very useful for you. So um, please keep tuned. And um, yeah. And finally, um, on behalf of all of us here at EU IPO, we would wish you all the best for 2021. And uh, yeah, thank you very much for joining us today.